In Washington State, many of us spend time in the woods, yet we can't see the forest for the trees. We walk right by healthy and unhealthy trees without knowing how to tell the difference. The forest and the trees are telling us a story at every moment. Pat Mahoney teaches forest resource management at Grays Harbor College. Every quarter he sees students' perception of forests transform as their knowledge expands. Well, I'm Patrick Mahoney, and I am the instructor for the Bachelor's of Forest Resource Management degree at Grace Harbor College out here in Aberdeen, Washington. I remember when I was in college and I took my first dendrology course, dendrology being where forestry students learn to identify plants and trees. And I remember the professor describing that subject as you know, completely changing the way that we look at the forest. And, and the way he described it is that before you take this course, you walk through the woods and you just sort of see this wall of green and you recognize that there are trees and plants, but you don't necessarily know what they are. And once you start to learn how to identify all these different organisms, it's like the whole forest goes into HD. And now you can see all the little details and you can differentiate not just, you know, the tree species, but also the shrubs and the forbs, the mosses, the fungi, all the little insects and animals, um, and even, you know, different components of the soil itself. And that changes everything about how you see the forest because Without that understanding, um, we kind of think of the forest as something that's almost homogenous, but it's not. It's a really complicated ecosystem. So most of what we're looking at here, you know, these conchs, their presence indicates a tree that's already dying. They're living and feeding on dead tissue. So um, the very presence of that tells you as a forester that that tree is seriously unhealthy to a point where you're probably not saving that tree, but you might be able to save other trees around it if you can identify the pathogen, if there's an option for treatment. You know, like any, like really any field of study, the more you learn about something, the less you know. The more you learn about the forest, the more questions you have, um, and the deeper that understanding goes, um, you get into the microscopic world and I mean you can spend entire careers specializing in you know the life cycle and effects of a single pathogen and so you know forestry is is a, a much wider career field than just managing forests and working with trees there's um, a lot of different avenues that you can specialize in so there are people who specialize specifically in forest entomology, studying forest insects. These are Douglas fir bark beetles. They're pretty small, so they'll get into the, uh, the bark of relatively healthy trees and they, they live in that layer of tissue in between the bark and the wood, what we call the cambium. And then we have similar uh, species. These are spruce beetles. They're um, in the same genus as the Doug fir beetles. They look very similar but they're, you know, specialized to spruce. Uh, there are people who specialize specifically in forest pathology, studying diseases. The very nature of forestry is multidisciplinary. In order to be a forester, you have to understand a little bit about everything, um, but we all tend to have something that we really key in on as our specialty. There's a number of different ways to get into forestry. Um, it's a career field that you can get into with just a high school diploma. Um, in fact, you don't really have to have any formal education to get a start in forestry. Um, there are a lot of jobs out there that um, start at what we would call a technician level, where you'd be working under someone who has a deeper understanding. Um, and that's actually a really great way for people who are really interested in the career field, but maybe don't know what exactly they want to do with that to get some exposure. You core trees for different reasons. If I want to age the tree, I got to hit the pith. But if I'm looking and using this more as a a forest health tool, then having the exact age isn't as important. So 
Let's see if I can pull a core out. There we go. Mm. But what I'm really looking at here, if I'm looking at forest health, is I'm looking at the size of these growth rings. I'm also looking at the moisture. And one of the things that's really unique about forestry is that foresters essentially get to shape the work environment that they that they live in. Um, we get to actually shape and create the environment around us um, to whatever we desire. We're not just creating things for ourselves today, we're creating something for future generations as well. These are decisions that don't impact just you and your job, they impact everyone. Because when we manage forests, we're managing part of a broader global ecosystem that is critical to the function of everything on this planet. And, and that's where you really have to have that deep understanding of the science and the ecology to understand how the things that you do today will impact the forest of tomorrow. Understanding the indicators of forest health can make your next walk in the woods a whole new world. For more information about PEI's courses or Green Career Pathways, please contact Green Jobs at PacificEducationInstitute.org or visit pacificeducationinstitute.org.